to this episode of Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I am documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And tonight I have a very special guest on, Casey Johns. Casey, how are you doing today? I'm so good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm doing awesome now that I get to talk to you finally. So where are you calling in from? Um, I am in Nashville, Tennessee today. Okay. And is that your home base? Yes, it is now. I've been in Nashville for probably about six years now. Okay. And how are you liking it? Oh man, I love it here. It's so nice. There's like the weather here is really cool. I mean, it's just right now it's like 60 degrees outside. So it's perfect. Okay. And uh, we talked a little bit offline, but I'm here in Florida and it's hot. It's already <laughs> starting to get summertime and we did get a little bit of that cool front that dipped down here, but it's, it's going back up. But you, you were also, I guess, born and raised in Tennessee, correct? I was. Yeah. So I was born and raised, well, born in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, raised in North Mississippi area. Oh, okay. And uh, so how long were you in Mississippi? Um, so we were only in Memphis for a short while and, mm -hmm. uh, I basically went to school in, uh, in North Mississippi area. And then when I was about 20 is when I, when I left the nest. <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about Mississippi as far as, you know, things that you enjoy doing out there, because to me, uh, I used to live in Texas, like I said, now I'm in Florida and Mississippi was really just for me, a state that I drove through to get to Florida. So tell me a little bit, uh, you know, that's actually good that I probably should have stopped for no, well, to be honest, I don't feel like there's a whole lot to do in Mississippi, <laughs> but that's probably why I picked up the guitar pretty young. And, and uh, but, you know, me, uh, me and my mom were both horse riders. She was a barrel racer and a horse trainer. So uh, she kept me pretty busy on the road, going to rodeos and stuff. So I was high school ro rodeo and all the time. And uh, that's and playing music. That was basically all I did in, back home. And that radio thing is very interesting. Tell me a little bit about that. How, how long did you do it? You know, what did you actually perform in it? Yeah. Um, so, well, I think, I, man, I've been on a horse since probably the day I was born. My mom, you know, always had horses. We always had, um, she was always training horses and, and stuff like that and breaking horses. So she always had horses and goats and, um, we just always had animals around. So yeah, I've been on a horse my, probably my whole life. And, um, when I picked up the guitar around 15 is when I basically kind of stopped riding horses and knew I wanted to pursue a different career. Okay. And uh, so, you know, from horses to, to this career, I mean, you are doing really well right now. The latest song that you have out is Confused. Yeah. And uh, it, it is doing well on the music road charts. I mean, it's streaming like crazy. Uh, how exciting is that for you? Oh, man. The day I saw the email that Confused is, is now 120 on the music road charts, I cried my eyes out because <laughs> I've never had a song on the charts before. So it's just been, it's been an amazing ride. And I honestly couldn't do it without the wonderful team that I had behind me. So. And tell us a little bit about the backstory of the song. Yeah. So uh, I wrote this song during COVID and uh, I wrote this song with my buddies, Tim Angston and Tim Baumgartner and they're good buddies of mine. We play here in town together and, and travel on the road a lot together. And, uh, we, you know, during COVID, it was just a difficult time. Everybody was, I mean, we went right into the writing room. We were there, you know, once, twice a week, just constantly just writing, trying to put new material out and taking advantage of that time. So uh, this was one of the songs written during that time. And we just, um, we, you know, basically wrote this about people, couples specifically, if, you know, when they're having trouble fighting um, and trying to get through those difficult times. And um, that was basically what the song was about. Okay. And, and I know I'm enjoying it, but I'm also enjoying the video because you do have a video out for it. And tell us a little bit about that because it you, you did show us some behind the scenes, you know, photos on your social media and it looked like a fun time uh, creating that video. It was really cool. I, you know, this was uh, my first concept video, so I've never done really any professional acting. So this was like my first time actually like getting to act and um, kind of uh, put some concept into it. And, uh, yeah, it was really fun. I enjoyed it. It was a blast. You're going to do more of that, uh, as, as we go through then maybe? I hope so. Cause it was so <laughs> much fun. All right. And, uh, so I see you have a guitar there. Would you be willing to play confused here on Hank's corner? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. All right, here we go. Both you and I, we agree, 
we got a good thing sometimes we don't see eye to eye on what life brings sitting on the kitchen fire i hear through the bedroom door talking me down to your mother And that was Casey Johns here on Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. And she was singing her latest song, Confused. And uh, that's one that I definitely recommend you all go out there and, uh, you know, uh, download it, you know, buy it, but also watch the video because it was definitely an interesting video. So tell me, you said, you know, you, you were out there in Mississippi and you eventually made the transition over to Nashville, but there's a lot of stuff and, and pretty interesting stuff from what I've read that happened to you along the way. So tell me what sparked your interest in actually moving towards the uh, music side of things. Yeah. So um, I picked up the guitar when I was like 15 and uh, started writing songs right away. I just, I fell in love with, with music. Um, I got involved pretty heavily into my youth praise band at church and uh, played guitar and sang in church a lot and um, kind of went from there. I um, ended up, you know, starting a, a, a band in Memphis and started playing in bars and stuff when I was way too young to even go in those bars and uh, just honestly just playing anywhere and any any song I could just to try to get out there and play music. And um, when I was about 20, uh, I saw a... Um, I saw a job offer on a cruise ship. And so I went and worked on cruise ships for a couple of years. And then after that, um, saw a job offer for Dollywood. And then I went to Dollywood for one season in 2016. And uh, then right after that, I decided to not really work for corporate companies anymore and make my way to Nashville. Okay. And so I'm going to focus in right now on the cruise ship, because that's something that, uh, you know, we've been trying to get back and take our next cruise here. And, uh, you know, just with everything that's been going on, we're not quite ready to to do that yet, but, uh, tell me how is it, you know, one, you know, performing on a ship, is it, is it, you know, glamorous or do you not get as much time as you would think? And then also tell me about some of the, you know, places that you've been to. Oh man, working on cruise ships was the best experience. I tell everybody that because I think, that if you're an entertainer or wanting to be an entertainment host or anything of that matter, like do the job, especially when you're young, because it is so much fun. Um, but our my job was basically I worked four hours a day. We did, you know, four to five, 45 minute sets each night. Uh, we had one day off a week 
And it was just amazing. I mean, we got to travel the world and and I was considered a rock band vocalist. So we did a lot of um, like uh, different themes each night. We did a Motown night, uh, disco. We did country music. We did, um, oh gosh, Woodstock night. I mean, there were so many different themes and they would dress us up. Like we'd be to, mm. to all the nines. We'd, they'd dress us up into the Woodstock era and the eighties era. And uh, yeah, we would perform each night on the ship and it was the best job I've ever had. Did you have a favorite, uh, you know, genre that you got to dress up and play or was it just fun doing them all? Oh, 80s night. Every okay. every week I got to do 80s night because that was like, I love 80s music. Anything female 80s like Pat Benatar or Heart, like I love that kind of stuff. Okay. And so where are some of the places that you got to visit and some of the interesting things that you got to see? So um, I worked for Carnival Cruise Lines and I mostly only went into the Caribbean. So uh, we did, gosh, Puerto Rico. We did uh, uh, the Grand Cayman Islands. Um, we did St. Martin. Uh, gosh, um, Mexico. Uh, we went everywhere, anywhere and everywhere you could think of. I've probably been to every Caribbean island out there. <laughs> hmm. And how, how have you ever been seasick? Oh, my very first night on the ship, I didn't know if I was going to be able to actually do the job because I, I did get a little seasick. But, um, you know, you kind of work through it. You kind of get used to it after a while. Okay. Because I, I always wondered, you know, the first time I went on a cruise, you know, how it was going to be. And I did pretty well up until one day we actually went through a storm. And uh, so that was pretty choppy. And pretty much everybody on the boat was kind of getting sick. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that happens that often, but it sure happened when when we were out there doing it. Oh, yeah, it definitely happens. We uh, I remember the first night my mom came to cruise with me. Um, she just came to visit and the very first night that she was on, we went through a terrible storm and she got a little seasick mm. and I had been on the ship for probably, you know, gosh, nine months at that time. And so I was pretty used to it and I just felt so bad for her cause it's, it, cause you definitely go through them. Yeah, definitely. So you did mention that, you know, at 15, you picked up a guitar. I, I, I believe you had, you know, somebody teaching you at that point. But you but you said the, uh, you know, you immediately started writing music. Did that just come naturally to you? Or was it something that you've always, you know, practiced? But at 15, that's when you decided, hey, I'm going to do it. Well, I think um, this. if I look back now on some of the songs that I was probably writing, they probably weren't that good. So <laughs> I don't. I would never even like release those at this point. But um, I think, honestly, it just kind of came naturally. I'd, it's, um, I've always loved music. I've always loved, um, for some reason, I always kind of knew like forms of music. Like it was always like a verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus. Like I always just kind of studied a lot of, of what other artists were doing. And I just, I just loved music. So yeah, it kind of came natural in a, in a way, but as, as anything, you have to kind of, you know, practice makes perfect. So mm -hmm. I definitely was writing a whole lot before I was like, Oh yeah, we should put this song on a record. Okay. And what song, I mean, what uh, inspired you? Do you grab a lot of uh, stuff from, from life or stuff that you see or read to actually put into your music? I think everyday life of, of people that you meet, songs that you hear, books that you read, inspire me. Um, things that inspire me most is like just mostly people that I'm around. I love I love stories. I love stories that that I love listening to people tell stories. And um, you know, when my friends are having issues, like I love listening to their <laughs> problems and things that they're going through. And I mean, good or happy, you know, good or bad or whatever. I love listening to those types of things and putting those into songs. So that's, that's definitely something that really inspires me. Okay. And do you have, uh, you know, other co-writers that, you know, are kind of like on the top of your list that you enjoy working with? And if there is one particular co-writer and in, in particular that you would love to write with, who would that be? Oh man. Um, there are so many great writers here in town. I, you know, I love, I love the crew that I write with now to make Stint, Tim Baumgartner, Colin Cross. Like I love those guys and, and Billy Smiley, who's my producer. I write with him pretty often. Um, but a songwriter that I would really love to write with right now is Shy Carter. Okay. And, uh, so is that a possibility or you haven't reached out yet or I haven't reached out yet? I don't even know, like, 
it, I don't even know how to do that. I mean, I guess I could just message them on Instagram, but I'm sure there's a process. <laughs> <laughs> there always is. And that's how I felt, you know, when I first started podcasting, I'm like, how do I even get people on the podcast? It's, you yeah. know, because I, I actually do something full, something else full time. Uh, and so this was something different, but uh, Hey, if I can do this, uh, I'm sure you can uh, ha have that dream as well. So tell me about No More Chances. Was that something that you wrote as well? It, yeah, definitely. Uh, this was a song that I wrote. Um, so we released a version of Whiskey Break. And right after Whiskey Break, we released a song called No More Chances. And then we re-released Whiskey Break again. But in between, there was a song, No More Chances, that really didn't get the marketing that it probably should have. So it was kind of slipped under the radar. But this is probably one of my favorite songs that I get to do live because it, it's got such a cool dobro part. Um, and it's such a girl power song that uh, I wish it could have gotten more recognition than it did. But uh, but yeah, this is like my girl power song that I like to play sometimes. All right. Well, I would love to hear it here on Hank's Corner. Absolutely. Let's do it. You've been trying way too hard now It's how you strut yourself around He lines up the shots and Pours himself some liquid courage Comes over now and makes a play But all you're gonna get is No more chances to Try to get a little up in action Way past all your little voices Every little move just shows Hesitation, no more calculation, no more bad equations. I'll stand my ground. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, we had a papa. Ooh, ooh, we had a papa. Yeah. I know where they're teasing, play a little kitchen squeezing. This night is only just begun. Kissing and talking, lips are glossing, legs are crossing, everybody's rocking. I know, but at the end of the day, yeah, all you're gonna get is no more chances to try to get a little up in action. Way past all your little voices, every little move just shows you poison. No more hesitation, no more calculation. No more bad equations, I'll stand my ground, yeah. Ooh, ooh, yeah, da, ba, ba. Ooh, ooh, yeah, da, ba, ba, yeah. All you're gonna get is no more chances to try to get a little love in action. Way past all your little voices, every little move just shows you poison. No more Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. along with Casey Johns. And that was her girl power song, No More Chances. And I'll be honest, I have not heard that one. I've heard a bunch of songs by you, but that one, like you said, kind of slipped through the cracks and I have not heard it, but I like it. Thank you. Very good. It's, it's actually really cool with the, with the full band. It's got a cool dobro part. It's really countryfied. It's real like, it's my, it's kind of country pop. It's a little bit different than what I normally do, but. Yeah, definitely something that, you know, to see live and, you know, kind of like, like you said, with all the band and, you know, I could just see the crowd moving to that one. So pretty cool. I like it. Thank you, man. Now, I'm curious because I think I saw in social media that uh, you had some photos from Norway. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Oh, man. So Norway, we've been to Norway uh, probably twice before, uh, before COVID. And we got to play a couple shows over there and it just, it went so well, man. The, the Norway folks, I mean, they just, they love country music and mm. they just appreciate it in a way that I've just never seen before. And uh, yeah, so we, we booked some more shows back over there and got to go over there for about a week and play, play again, but we go back again in July. 
Oh, pretty cool. So how does, you know, something like Norway come up? Was that, you know, you throw a dart on the map and say, hey, we want to go there? Or did you have some kind of connection to it? Uh, I kind of had a connection. Um, so a buddy of mine that I play guitar with, his name's Tim Baumgartner, who I write with a lot as well. Um, he's one I wrote with, wrote confused with, uh, but he had, um, a friend, uh, he was, he's a promoter. His name's Kai. And, uh, he, you know, they met here in Nashville and they came to watch us play one night and he was like, Hey, what is it going to take to get you guys to come to, to Norway? And we were like, well, let's, let's book it. Let's see what we can do. And so, yeah, he books us, you know, at least two to three times a year and we go up there and play some music. And that's always interesting when you hear something like they, like you said, oh, yeah, they really like country music. And, you know, the more and more I start doing these podcasts and I've done, you know, internationally with people from Ireland and Australia, and you hear that they do like this country music and it may be a little bit different and they may have, you know, a little bit different instrumentation to it, but they like the country. And I think a lot of it has to do with maybe because country tells stories, I, you know, I don't know. But, you know, and, and looking at your, you know, stats from Spotify last year, you know, you had like 63 countries that were listening to your music. What do you think about that? Oh, it was crazy. Like the other day, um, about a month ago, I saw that we had hit Japan and I was just like, what is happening? So it's really cool to watch the, um, to the reports to see, you know, where my music's being played. And, um, I know we got a, we got Ukraine actually of all places. Uh, it's been mm. playing over there. And, um, but yeah, it's just been, it's, it's been really cool to see, you know, Australia jump in there and Canada and, and all these other places show up. It's, it's been awesome to see that. That's pretty cool. And so you said you are going back to Norway this summer, but is there anywhere else, if you had the opportunity to go play, where would you like to go play? Um, I mean, if I had anywhere in the world that I'd love to play, I would just love to play the Grand Ole Opry here in town. <laughs> well, who would it? Yes, that would be definitely a great honor. But um, if I were to go to another country and play, probably Australia. That's that's one place I've always wanted to go. Okay. And so I also saw some things about uh, Wisconsin that you're there quite a bit. Even saw your first Packers game last year. Uh, do you have a connection to Wisconsin or is just, you know, a place that you like going? You know, honestly, it was kind of the same way as getting the connection to Norway. I, I met some folks um, a couple years back playing down on Broadway. They lived in Wisconsin. Uh, we developed a you know a really good friendship, and um, they asked me one day. They were like, "Hey, what is it? What's it going to take to get you to come out here?" And mm -hmm. I told them, and they were like, "All right, let's get you up here." So I go out to Wisconsin maybe two or three times a year, and just got back from there this past weekend, and I go back again and. Uh, actually in a couple weeks, less than 30 days. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I did see that big stretch limo that, uh, uh, you were in Wisconsin with. So that's, that's pretty cool. Look at you styling out there. <laughs> hey, and I actually just took a picture in that. I don't even, I didn't even really get to write on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to tell people that. <laughs> let, let, let them think that. So, uh, but yeah, you did see a Packers game. Are you a big sports fan? I'm a huge football fan. Um, and, you know, growing up, I didn't really watch. I was kind of a girly girl. I wasn't really into sports. Uh, my sister was. She played softball. She played soccer. She did all the sports stuff. Uh, but growing up, you know, when my mom remarried, he was, you know, my dad, my stepdad was really into football. And he was like, hey, you got to you got to pick a team. You got to pick a team. And the first game that we watched together was a Packers game. So I yeah. just became a Packers fan that night, like instantly an Aaron Rodgers fan. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. So, um, you know, one of the things that I like about your music, uh, the song Whiskey Break, and, and I know that you joked about it earlier off air that you, you know, you got some whiskey there and I, I have nothing but a little water bottle here, but, uh, tell me about how that song came about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this inspiration came from Tim Baumgartner, who I've, who I've mentioned a couple of times, um, him and I play, you know, we've played hundreds of shows together. And, uh, when we're on stage together, he is always, you know, someone buys us a shot or someone buys us a drink or whatever. He, during each song, he would always go, Oh, whiskey break. And mm. he would always just yell it out. And for years I was like, man, that would be such a good title for a song. And I was like, I really want to write that before someone else writes it. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it and I went into the studio with Billy Smiley and him and I wrote it together. Okay. And you have a video for this as well, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And and where was that video shot? Um, so we did two versions of two versions of this video. Uh the first one was done um 
two years ago and it was done at a, a little dive bar here in town. But the second video was done here at Puckett's. Uh, in okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Definitely an interesting video. I think I've only seen the one, but now I got to go search for the second one. And would you mind singing that as well here on Hank's Corner? Absolutely. Well, I hope you like it. I wish you had a little whiskey to drink with me during this song. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I do the replay, I'll definitely grab it. <laughs> there we go. And that's Casey John singing Whiskey Break here on Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of whiskey breaks this week as everybody's going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day this week. Do you have a uh, favorite whiskey that you go to? Oh, uh, gosh, I have so many different. So I, I drink Jim Beam all the time because it's super cheap. Uh, but I love Jameson. I love Woodford. Uh, right now I'm drinking... Um, uh, a little uh, black cherry whiskey from a little, um, it's a, it's a little, uh, 
moonshine place in, in East Tennessee called Junction 35. And they sell a lot of moonshine and whiskey over there. And they had this black cherry whiskey that I thought was kind of interesting. So I, mm. I bought it and tried it and it's been delicious. All right. And you mentioned Jameson, you know, like I said, it's it's St. Patrick's week this week. And, uh, you know, for a while there, you know, I was a big Bushmills fan, uh, you know, from the time I went over to Ireland, brought some of that back. But uh, lately I've been drinking a uh, a peanut butter whiskey. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but uh, well, I don't know what it is, but that's like my dessert right now. I will say peanut butter whiskey is the best. I, I drank it for a long time. And then I go through phases of whiskey. Like I get sick of whiskey for a while and I'm like, um, cause I went through that phase where I loved Jack honey for a while. And, and then I went through peanut butter whiskey and now I'm in a Jameson phase. And like, I go through the phases of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, it, it's always good to try something new anyway. So tell us what can we expect out of Casey Johns, you know, for the, from the remainder of the year, is there anything that's going to be in the near future you know, that you can give us a hint about? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, this is the first time I get to actually announce this, but, um, we are releasing the, the Thunder album that, um, it's finished, it's done. We're going to release it online. Um, and we are working on a brand new record. We were just in the studio today. We cut three new songs and I'm excited to, uh, have a new single come out in May on the brand new record. Oh, well, you guys hear that first here on Hank's Corner. And and you mentioned the Thunder album and, uh, did I see right that you have a vinyl version of that? Yes, I should have brought it over here. It's right over here. Yeah, you can actually kind of see it right there. <laughs> okay. And so uh, people can go to your website and order that, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, you can go to the website. They're $30 right there on caseyjohns.rocks. Yeah, and you can also get the CD version, but I think, you know, vinyl is pretty cool. It, it, it's making a huge comeback lately. And, uh, you know, I don't know what it is because now I'm going to have to go back and, and get me a record player. I had one when I was younger. Now I don't, but I am starting to collect these records that I'm going to have to do. And, and I'm going to have to get yours as well. Absolutely. Well, I'll just send you one. How about that? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I appreciate you being a, uh, a guest here on Hank's Corner. And uh, of course, you can be a guest anytime. But if you ever make it down to Florida, you got to let me know. So that way we can come out and see you. Absolutely. Hey, what part of Florida do you live in? I'll be in Key West in a couple of weeks. So we're in Tampa. It's a, it's a little bit of a drive okay. to Key West. But, uh, you know, hopefully when you go down there, you'll be able to enjoy the nice sunny weather. Well, hopefully I'll get to see you very soon. <laughs>